All right, we are coming to the end of the study. I mean, we could go on with this study for the next year probably, but we're going to end here, I believe, tonight. And Lord willing, we'll start Tuesday night and you'll get me back to back. I, I don't do this very often anymore. I try not to, but you'll get me back to back, Lord willing, Tuesday night. We'll start a new study on the covenant. So we'll be dealing with tonight the seed and inheritance. And we'll come back Tuesday night and we will start with the covenant of the Lord. So what I said last Sunday night to me just ministered to my heart really this whole week tremendously. The Lord just filling me up with the king of righteousness and what that means to believers. And if, if I could, I would take it to every believer and just immerse them in the righteousness of God. I, I believe Christians struggle to be righteous. And they struggle because they don't see his righteousness. They try to perform righteousness. And they believe we're in this performance-based religion that I'm not telling you you don't have anything to do because, because some people, when they walk in a grace message, can get this idea that, well, we're in grace. We don't have anything to do. I don't believe that. I believe that out of grace, you will function. So I believe there will be a functioning of the Lord that comes out of his grace. But the functioning of the Lord out of his grace is different than the functioning under the law. Because the functioning under the law is to prove I'm righteous and holy by the works of the law. And the Apostle Paul declared in the book of Philippians, I believe I want chapter, I don't have this in my notes, so you can get extra. <laughs> in Chapter 3, Philippians 3, Paul says, Finally, verse 1, brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinks that he hath, whereof he might trust in the flesh, I the more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of a Hebrew as touching the law of Pharisee concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Now, I'm going to stop here, and we're going to keep on. If I take this counted loss for Christ, and I went over to Romans 6, and Paul says, reckon yourselves to be dead, and I read from 1 through 7 here, I believe what Paul's doing here, he's reckoning himself to be dead to all of these things. What things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I might win Christ, and be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, 
if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth, for those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Well, if you read verse 12, he says, not as though I had attained or were already perfect. Then he says, let us as many as be perfect. Now, these may be two different Greek words, and I'll tell you if they are, because I can do that because I got my Bible dictionary right in front of me. He In the one place, perfect is 5046. And that is in verse 15, and that means complete. And the other one's 5048, which is to complete, that is to accomplish or consummate, finish, fulfill. And so they are slightly different words, uh, very, very similar. Uh, looks like one probably came out of the other or is linked right with it, however that works. But he's saying he's pressing toward all things in Christ is what Paul's saying. Okay. That I've counted everything in the past as done. You know, my religious upbringing, what I was according to the flesh, me being a Pharisee, I just count that as rubbish. For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus the Lord. Now that's a mouthful that everything is about the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Everything. Everything. Now, if believers understood that, you would lay down your weapons with one another. If everything became the excellency, the knowledge of Christ Jesus the Lord. That would be what we're after to attain in everything we do, in all things, giving thanks. Now, that's a mouthful in all things. Another place, I believe Brother James and I was talking earlier, and he quoted that, in all things, giving thanks. And, it, and if, I, if I just look at it in the natural, and I can thank the Lord in all things in the natural, and that's good, but I can... Look at all things in Christ Jesus, my Lord, and give thanks. So, so Paul is saying Christ apprehended him. Okay, That the work of Christ captured him, got a hold of him. Now he, in that work, is made perfect. Just like he says over in Colossians, you are complete in him. So in the work of Christ, you're complete. Now, this is why you should be pressing toward the mark. This is why you should be trying to find all things, you, you know, determining to know all things in the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus the Lord, because your completion is there. Okay? Every Christian, probably everybody in the world, wants to be complete. If you, if you just strip everything down in the world, every man and woman, you just bared everything out here, in their hearts, they want to be complete. And they will, and we sometimes use the word fulfill, and you'll find out the word perfect, complete, and fulfill in your Bible, a lot of times are the same word, okay, or convey the same meaning. So people will do things to be fulfilled, okay? 
whether it's drugs or alcohol or whatever, I want to be fulfilled. And I try to find fulfillment in them. It can be, now Paul was talking about religion. He wasn't talking about bad things. So, so he, he was a religious man. <laughs> so, so, so we, we, from the Pentecostal side, we like to talk about what we call the bad things. Okay. But Paul comes about it from the, what we would call the good things, you know, according to the law, he says, I, I'm righteous, man. I mean, think of that. I'm keeping the law, but I can't find the perfection that's in Christ Jesus. And I, I said this this morning, the law was a testimony of Jesus himself. You know, when Paul writes the law is holy, just, and good, a lot of believers today have kind of thrown that out, and, the, and they're kind of saying, well, we don't need the law. I know we're not under the law. But it doesn't mean we don't need to understand the law. It's the same way with the prophets. If you said, well, we're not under the prophets, that's true. But don't you still understand the prophets? Sure you do. So the law, we've dealt with that, was our schoolmaster to bring us to what? To Christ. And the law is holy, just, and good. And the law serves its purpose because the law shows that there's none righteous no, not one. That all, doesn't matter if you're Jew or Gentile, it puts all in the same category, that all are in sin. And see, Paul deals with this in Romans 3. If you get into Romans 3, I know we like to say, well, the Gentiles weren't under law, but maybe, maybe that's true, but they were in sin. <laughs> Whether they were under the law or not, they were in sin. People don't like that word anymore either. That's a bad word. You're in sin. Well, let's just use a bad word tonight. You're in sin. If you're not in Christ, you are in sin. That's the way it is. And in sin is death. And Paul said the result of sin is death. Okay? So the victory over death is death. That's what Christians don't understand. The victory over death, they think the victory over death is just being resurrected. Okay? And, and Paul says this in Philippians, and I'm probably going to turn back to Romans 3, but here in Philippians, he says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Now, how many Christians you hear today says, conform me to the death of the Lord? <laughs> you don't hear a lot of them. You can listen to a lot of ministers and you won't hear it. But Paul says, conform me to your death because his victory over all these things is death. Because in the death of the Lord, he died to these things. And he's raised in newness of life in the resurrection of the Lord. So where does the burial fit in? A lot of people talk about the death and burial. I believe the burial is the process of the death taking place in our hearts. There has to be a putting away of ourselves. <laughs> and that's what a burial is in the natural. You take something dead and you put it away. You don't leave it laying out because it'll start stinking. You get rid of it. And you get rid of it because it stinks, and you also get rid of it because of the remembrance of it. Okay? So you put it away. And so when you put it away, you begin to look at what's before you. Well, what's before you is the victory of the Lord. He's the king. Well, a king reigns, rules. He rules in righteousness. What righteousness is he ruling? His own. He is the righteousness of God. We are made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, but he is 
the righteousness of God. <laughs> Do you hear me? We are made the righteousness of God, but he is the righteousness of God. Say that one more time. We are made the righteousness of God. He is the righteousness of God. So what we're made is what he is. Okay? So what he is is what we are made, conformed, built up in. And we have to be built into it. There has to be a working of this faith in our hearts. That this is true. See, see the other night, the law of the spirit of life, flip there, Romans 8. Flip there, Romans 8. This, this was so profound in me, so profound in my heart. And I, and I feel like if it could be heard by the spirit of the Lord, it'll take people out of problems that they have. A lot of people have problems and they, one out of them. You know, good Christian people don't want to be in their problem. People that love the Lord. Well, here's, here's the problem fixer. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Well, well this little term, in Christ Jesus, <laughs> you could study out the rest of your days in the earth. And your rest of your days in him there's no condemnation in christ jesus now we can read it in the king james to those that walk according to the spirit not according to the flesh i probably quoted it backwards so you have no condemnation in christ jesus why do you have no condemnation because he became condemnation he received upon him the condemnation of me See, see, this teaching that's out here concerns me. There's a teaching going on in the earth that really concerns my heart. Because it's telling people, all you have to do is realize what you were in the eons and ages ago. Well, Paul says you were darkness, so it conflicts with what Paul says. Paul says you were dead in sin. And either these guys and gals that are teaching this have a better revelation of the Lord than Paul did, or they don't know what they're talking about. It's one or the other. You can't have it both ways. Now, we can try to have it both ways, but it never works when we have it both ways. I guess I'm just going to bust this thing wide open, okay? It's one way or the other. And it ain't my way. My way won't help you. It's the Lord's way. He said, I'm the way. So, so he identified that which is from, from the earth is below. And that which is above is from his Lord of all. Now, that's my way of saying it, but you can go read it in the book of John. He is above all. Okay, He's from above, and he's above all. And if you're from the earth, then you're of the earth. And he says you must be born from above. Now, a lot of people don't like that anymore. They don't want to get born again, don't want to teach being born again. It's like, well, how do you start with God if you're not born of his spirit? How do I even have a beginning in God? Well, they say, well, your natural birth was a beginning. And I want to say, really? I had an actual born again experience where Christ came into my heart. And I knew Jesus lived in me. Didn't know a lot about it, but I knew he was in me. Now, this Jesus that was in me, I didn't get a whole lot of it. I didn't get that all my sins were laid up on him. I, I knew he forgave all my sins, but I really didn't comprehend that he not only forgave all my sins, he took all my sins upon him. I didn't comprehend that part. I believed he forgave my sin, but I really didn't comprehend that he also took them upon himself and put them away. And brought me into newness of life. And I couldn't bring myself there. By grace, you're saved. So the grace of God began to work and bring me into new life. And that's the work of God in Christ. Not my work, that's his work. So this work that God did worked in me. 
And I begin to see that there's no condemnation, that I don't have to be condemned. I don't have to worry whether God is my father now and whether he's going to be my father tomorrow. He's my father. I'm born of Christ. And I come to that place through comprehending that which I'm apprehended of Christ. That's what Paul's talking about, that he would, that he would get a hold of what Christ has done. And, and we don't get a hold of the whole thing at one time. <laughs> we want to, but that ain't the way it works. The Spirit of God reveals Christ as living bread in our hearts and minds, and we get a hold of it. Took me a long time to get a hold of what I'm sharing with you. That the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, and I probably don't have a hold of it all. I know it all. Hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, what I get a hold of here is that his life in me has made me free of this other life. And God ain't going to measure me according to this old life. He's going to measure me according to this life of Christ that lives in me. That's grace. His life living in me is my measurement. That's what I believe God means when he says, he will henceforth know we know man after the flesh. We're not known any longer after that old man. We're known in Christ. That's how we're known. And this is his work. And this has to be comprehended in my heart. I have to get a hold of it. Now, I could say it's true because the scripture says it's true. And I, and I think that's, that's a pathway of a start is you begin to agree with the scripture it's true. But you still have to comprehend it in your heart. There has to be an understanding of the Lord worked in you. And it's him. The understanding of the Lord's not separate from the Lord. It's the Lord's life being worked in your heart. Till you come to what Paul says, the law of spirit of life has made me free from the law of sin and death. I'm not judged anymore out of that old law. Now, Christians believe if they fall, if they commit a sin, they go back under the law. I don't believe that. <laughs> it may have taken me a long time to say that to you, but I don't believe that. John says, if any man does sin, we have a, an advocate with the Lord Christ Jesus the righteous, or Christ Jesus the Lord. We have an advocate with the Father. So our advocate would plead on our behalf, if you want to use the word plead, or he would, he would show I've taken your sin. Now, people think if you teach this way, then everybody's just going to run out and sin. Well, the more of this I see, the more of this I don't want to sin is the, is the truth. <laughs> I don't even want the disgusting nature of the old man because I see I'm dead to him, and I want the whole thing gone, the memory of it. That's how I feel about it. But this worked in me through the cross, not through the old covenant. Now, I study the old covenant, and I intend to Lord will and teach you on it here soon where we'll look at both the old and the new in, in the covenantal view. But we're going to do that to see Jesus. I'm going to do that to bring you back under it. I'm going to do that with you to see the Lord. Because his cross is enough. Like Brother Dale says, Jesus is enough. So his cross works in me. How does it work in me? I think it's multidimensional, personally. Well, what do you mean multidimensional? There's the mercy of the cross. Okay? The mercy seat. That's in the cross. It's in the person of Christ. And that's what we're talking about. He bore our sins. 
Now, that's mercy. He doesn't hold my sin against me. That's mercy. Now there's the death of the cross also, or the judgment of the cross. He not only doesn't hold my sin against me, he puts it away. <laughs> but that has to be worked down in my soul. And my soul has to come to a place of reckoning that to be true. Agree with the Lord. Reckon myself dead. You must lose your life, Jesus said, and that's soul, in order to find life. And that's his life. So, so the cross has that work, a work of mercy and a work of judgment. You're dead to the old man and alive unto God. That's why Paul wanted to be made conformable to his death, that this whole mess here of himself would be washed away in the Lord, taken away in the Lord, that he would see before him this glorious life of Christ. And in this life, there is no condemnation at all. That's hard for people to wrap around their mind especially when they've been in and out of religion that's told them every Sunday you come pray through and brought them back to an altar every Sunday. Instead of knowing the altar of Christ, they come back every time and they go back through the same ritual. I've got to get right with God. Well, you're already right with God if Christ is in you. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And John tells us we know we belong to God because we have the spirit. <laughs> so the evidence that I belong to God is I have his spirit. His spirit bears witness with my spirit that I am a child of God. So I know internally that I have God because he lives in me. Okay. And that's how I should know. Now I have to come and comprehend this God, this work this God has done in the person of Christ, that I may live uprightly in the earth. I'm not talking about law. I'm talking about living according to this work he's done. That's to me uprightly. That is righteous living. If I live according to this work Christ has done. <laughs> that's living righteously. Okay. Now, now people want to measure that out of the old covenant law, whether you live righteous, how long your hair is, whether you wear blue jeans. You know, a lot of things uh, that people want to measure by ain't even in the law, <laughs> but they want to measure by. Now, what I want to measure by is his word. Because let me go on here. I'll, I'll keep expounding this. For the law of spirit of life of Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin judged or condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And I already told you what walking after the Spirit is. The Spirit's going to take that of me and show it to you. So if you begin to walk after Jesus died for my sins, that's walking after the Spirit. You begin to confess that out loud, that's walking after the Spirit. Do you know that? Because the Spirit of God has dealt with your heart, and you've received that into your heart, and you're walking after it. Jesus died for my sins. Now, if I don't, if I keep thinking, oh, no, I have sinned. I have missed it. I missed it. I missed it. And a lot of Christians do this. You know, people, I hear people talk about Christians coming up to the last days in the earth, and they've had Christ living in their heart. They've known the Lord, and then they're wondering, well, am I going to go to heaven or I'm going to go to hell? Well, if he's in your heart, you're his. Well, why do they wonder that? Because they don't know the work he's done. 
my Lord, he has made us one with him. So, so we start this journey and we may know nothing more than Jesus died for my sins and we get a hold of that. Then we get a hold of that he, he not only died for my sins, he took them away. He took my misdeeds, my bad character, my bad living, my riotous living, everything you could say, and he took it up on himself and he died for it. Now I want to be dead with him there. Because I don't want these deeds to manifest in me, okay? So I, so I want to be dead with him there. But I'm going to confess what he did. See, that's righteous living. I'm going to live out of what he's done in the earth. Glory to the Lamb of the living God. And you go on into what he's done. And you, and you deal with the sin issue, but you come on to the other side of it. And he says that they may be one as we are one. I and them, thou be, that they be made perfect and one. Here's this other part of it that is a oneness with him. The life he is lives in us. Wow. Now that's a, a whole other view. That we're not even conscious of sin because of the goodness of the Lord. Not because we became super saints and finally kept the law. <laughs> no, but because we become aware of him. There's no condemnation. Because Christ is my life. The law of the spirit of life. Christ is my life. The spirit of life that lives in me is I'm free from the law of sin and death because this life that lives in me is more powerful than that old was. What the old spoke of. So if I go on to 2 Corinthians, I believe that's what I want, chapter 5. I believe anyway, and I want us to look at this, being made... Oh, give me one moment here. 2 Corinthians 5, Paul says, verse 14, for the love of Christ constrains us, constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, who have reconciled this to himself by Jesus Christ and have given us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now, now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And, and I want to look up this word, we might be made in the the definition might be made, means, to cause to be, generate. That is to become, come into being, be assembled, be brought. So we're made the righteousness of God. How am I made that? Well, by him. Okay. Now, that's what I'm talking about. We get saved, and all this gets accounted to us because it's all in him, right? Sure it is. It's all true in him. doesn't mean I've comprehended it. <laughs> it's all true in him. Now, here's the being made part. We're coming to a comprehension of him. That this 
life of him lives in me. And see, this life of him doesn't live to the old. This life of him lives to the new. And my heart begins to see that. And when my heart begins to see that of him, what happens to my heart? Paul tells us, we look into a glass, into the glory of the Lord, and we are what? Changed. Into what? Into what we see, the same image. By the Spirit of the Lord. That of him begins to be formed in my heart. That's, uh, that's taken on a new mind. Because you, you don't consider things anymore like you did. You don't consider it after the old. You consider it after the new. You consider it after him. Man, I can preach right now. <laughs> that, that's where we consider is after Christ. Our thought pattern changes. So we're not here judging ourselves after the old. We're judging after him, after what he's done. We're his creation. We're, we're of God. My Lord, that's what we're of. We're of God through the work of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Jesus, you know, in the book of Hebrews, it says that he will declare his name unto his brethren, or thy name unto his brethren. He's declaring the nature and life of God to you and I, sharing it with us. Here's what it looks like, folks. Come and die and live in it. My Lord, this is how good this place is. But I didn't get in here because I was a great man because I had it all together. I didn't get in here because in some bygone era. I got in here because of the Lord Jesus. And we pressed for the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in it. That's, that's in him. That we would grow up in the full stature of this man. That we would live in this man. That are, we would be mindful of this man that we are in Christ. This new man that we've come to be part of. Never been a man like this one before. This new man that's created of God in Christ Jesus. You're a new creature, created of God in Christ Jesus. See, see this, this word of him creates what he did in your heart. It ain't just written in the scripture to, the, to memorize the scripture. And I, and I think you should memorize the scripture, sign against it. But it ain't in there just that we're scripture memorizers. It's in there that we come to know him in that relationship because he is the life living in me. That's what Paul says he is. Christ is our life. Well, that life lives in me. And I have to come to somewhere down the line to conform to that life that lives in me. I have to say it's true. I have to confess it to be so. And it ain't just a word of confession. I mean, I mean I, I'm all for a word of confession. I believe in confessing it to be so. I think you should. I think you should get up and tell the Lord this is true. Confess it to him night and day. But I believe this, that we confess, becomes a reality. I know some people don't like the word reality, but I do. It becomes a reality inside of you. It becomes, you come to know this. That's what Paul was writing about. For the excellency of the knowledge of the Lord. That doesn't mean I just have understood the scripture to say that. No, I've come to know this. He's losing his life to know this because his life that he had couldn't attain unto this thing. And in the natural, Paul had a good life. He was recognized of men. He was a high stature man as far as natural goes. And probably as far as Jews goes, he's really high. 
but he sees something higher because he sees a light brighter than the noonday sun. He comes and sees a light greater than any light he's ever seen. And he calls it the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And he's beginning to look into the face of Jesus Christ. The glory of God. He's seeing the glory of God, of how good God is. That he would transform our souls and our minds out of corruption into the incorruptible image of the living God. And it would be the work of God himself. It would be the work of knowing the Lord himself, that they all may know me from the least to the greatest. And the measuring stick of knowing the Lord is always Jesus Christ. He's the, if we want to call him the plumb line, he's the plumb line. He's everything you'll see in the place. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I don't have anything else to preach to you but him. I just want to do it in more depth and more understanding and more comprehension and more knowing. But it's him I want to declare. Because the goodness of him has surpassed anything I ever could imagine. I couldn't even imagine this, that, that the life, that, that the expression of the life of God, I would know it, maybe only this much, but I would know it. I would, I would come to a knowing of the expression of the life of God. And it would be so far beyond what I ever thought. And it would be shared in my heart. His life, his glory, his purpose, his will. And it'd be so good. Bring peace and joy, gentleness, kindness, things that... Uh, that, Lord, I didn't have. But I'd see them in my heart. I'd see the working of the Lord, the goodness of God. And I just want to bring people to this goodness, his goodness, not my goodness, because you got around me long enough, you'd probably find some things you didn't like about me. Probably don't like them either, okay? Because I want to be conformed only to his image. And character. Because this is so good, but this to tell you this isn't that God hasn't affected my soul would be a lie. He's affected me in a beautiful way that I want to know him. And this is what I see the king of righteousness, that, that he rules in righteousness and we share his victory, and we're able to declare the righteousness of God in Christ, that through faith we are made the righteousness of God in Christ. And I didn't even get there. I said, I'm going to stop here tonight, and I probably am. But if you go and read Romans 4 and 5, actually come out of 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, come up to 8 out of 3. And he deals with humanity in sin. And he lays out Abraham. That Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. But see, Abraham looked for a city that had foundations. See, as much as Abraham believed God and walked in that, he was looking for, if I can say it this way, he was looking for foundation. He was looking for the substance of what God was doing, I believe, in his life. The substance of it's Christ. Because it's this faith in Christ that works to remove sin. See, Abraham was declared righteous by the Lord because he believed God. But see, this substance of Christ makes it alive in you. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence. It becomes evidently known. You, you know it because his life is in you. And this good life is living in your soul. But we enter there by faith. We believe God. We believe God created the path 
in the person of Jesus Christ. And we believe God put all fullness in him. You know, when the when the unveiling of him be, begins to come, we believe that in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. We begin not to look somewhere else for it. We just look for it in him. We look for that of him to be made known. And we receive that what we know of him is what we know of God. That that's, you know, like Jesus said, I and my father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the father. And when you begin to see him, you begin to see what God is. And that God would share the goodness of his life in your heart. Now that's salvation. And we fellowship this. We have this great fellowship one with another. What fellowship? This fellowship of Christ. This is a great fellowship. And I'm so thankful for it. I'm so thankful to get to share it with people. It's a pleasure to share the goodness of the Lord. Well, I'll stop here tonight. Like I said, Lord willing, we will start on Tuesday night, unless the Lord presses me otherwise, we're going to start in the covenant and begin looking at it. And uh, next Sunday night, uh, Brother Mark will be sharing. And then the following Tuesday night, I'm going to ask someone to share because I have a commitment with work and uh, reach out and have one of you folks uh, share. And we'll continue to share like we do, uh, having everybody share and be part, everybody that wants to wants to share the Lord impresses. Uh, Lord, we, we love you sharing the Lord. Anyway, we'll stop here tonight. God bless you. Amen.